villages are in the front line of the Karen struggle. Their cooperation is vital. Food, information, support, all come from such places. The Karen soldiers feel at home, the people secure. But there is a price to pay, a day of reckoning when the score will be settled. If the Burmese suspect fifth column activity, death is almost certain. At the peak of the dry season, the heat is intense. The men lie exhausted, but the war stays with them. What has looked like pointless patrolling by 100 Karen has brought the unit within contact of a Burmese force of about 600. It has all happened before. The ritual of waiting begins. If it is good to stay here and wait, and wait here. From here. The proximity of the enemy makes a clash inevitable. The battleground is open country, a dry, flat plain. The heat increases the sense of foreboding, yet everything looks normal. It is 20 years since Major Tutu joined the rebel forces. <laughs> War becomes a way of life. You said before that there was a fight yesterday. Yeah. Uh, could you ask the Major to explain what happened yesterday? And, uh, <coughs> the last fighting is not heavy. It's a uh, small fighting. Just a skirmish? Yeah. Yesterday afternoon? Yeah. So what is the Major's plan today? Could you just tell us what he plans to do? Does he intend to attack the Burmese forces or is he waiting for them to attack us? Or what exactly is the plan? The Major said, we have to wait, wait and see. And he just ordered some soldiers to have a patrol, patrol. patrol. Right. If the Burmese uh, move away from this area, does the Major intend to pursue them? He said, if we meet, we will fight. So, he will plan to, so that the enemies will come at the direction <laughs> We are. Thank you. We want a united, federated state of Burma and the little states, all the states, get their own uh, government. The Shah, the Pichin, the Chin, the Arakan, and we. And the Burmese people will get the centre part. They should be quite satisfied with hmm? And Rangoon will be free for all. Three miles to the east, a section of Captain Kasso's unit was dispatched to carry out a job in which they are now expert. The anti-personnel mine, designed to maim the enemy but not kill them, plays a major part in repelling Burmese troops east of the Salween River. <coughs> The components are a bottle and a detonating device sprung by a piece of bamboo. Mm. 
For every casualty in the field, the Burmese must use at least two more men to evacuate the wounded. In this part of the country that presents huge logistic problems. Down on the road, the people from the village are warned of a possible push through the area by the Burmese force. Mines are being laid in the surrounding hills. Advice they should heed. The Karens seem confident their day's work would claim at least one victim among the approaching Burmese. With mines so widely used across this area, it is not always the intended victims who suffer. Well, this uh, patient's her name is Maniki. She is 29 years old, and she lives at Tamuya village. Two months ago, the Burmese soldiers came to their village, and then they stationed there. Our force here go and fight with them. And after the Burmese withdraw. She went to her well where they get water to, to get some water and then she stepped on the landmine there. Both of her legs were injured and she was rushed to a hospital here. No, I use the word rush, but it took two days for her to get here. Only the distance is only about 150 kilometers. At that time she was only a little bit strong. Her pressure is very low. So we had to date very quick amputation to her left leg. We can't dare not touch the right one. We have to wait another three or four days and then we did an, uh, another amputation. Quick one. After give, giving her two bottles of blood. Here is not like the western country that we, it's very hard to get blood 